Right, I'd like to give me uh, thoughts on targeting or targeted individuals. Um, something I've experienced plus MK Ultra. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. I just want to give some thoughts um, on the subject. Uh, tar targeting is a reality. Uh, a very nasty thing to find yourself on the end end of and something really when when you wake up to the truth it's you, you shouldn't really be surprised about it we live in a wicked fallen world now i'm a born again christian i have a testimony of jesus christ i don't have a a very good report of organized religion the catholic church church of england jehovah's witness S SDA, Seven Day Adventists, all, all these charismatic groups, uh, the Billy Graham crowd, all that, all the fruits from that, it's um, false. It, they don't teach the gospel. Um, they're all indirectly or directly yoked to the whore of Babylon, which is the Roman Catholic Church. They've always been the dominance upon the earth. And when you look into it, um, you'll find that they are primarily the ones behind it they're the, the global dominance of this world um, and you must understand if you're not a believer you're not going to see the truth you're going to just go to and fro with um, knowledge and no one has all the answers for the targeting individuals it's um, everybody's got their own story like the like the bible says we see darkly uh, paul the apostle said we see darkly and as a Christian, we live by faith, not by not by sight. And I, I only have my own personal experiences, so I don't really want to blur the lines. But you have to believe. If you don't believe, you're not going to see the simplicity of the truth. This is a fallen world since the Garden of Eden, and sin entered the world, and a mankind fell, and that was passed on genetically. It's a fact. And the author of, of that fall was Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the serpent. He deceived mankind, he deceived Eve, and ultimately Adam by Eve's, um, you know, fallenness. And, and it corrupted the human race, and it's the truth that we live in a fallen world. And the author of, this, of the world, the most dominant principality is Satan, and he works through men. He works through anyone who's an unbeliever and has vain ambitions and evil desires of the flesh. Whatever they may be, they manifest in so many different ways and it affects all of us. We're all prone, our nature is all subject to that force, that power, that lust, that, that, that desire, that vainness. And without Jesus Christ, you're not going to see the full truth. So I'm just going to give some... Um, thoughts on targeting individual and, and and a little bit of my experience that maybe maybe it will help somebody um, right. now there's uh, so much on the internet of people's experiences and everyone's got their own tale to say uh, tell and and like i say there's there's not really you're not going to get a full map, a full picture, because there's so many turns involved. Um, now, excuse the image, but that's kind of like how you're treated um, as a targeted individual. It, it's a very crude and sinister practice, and whoever's behind it, the powers behind it, they will use so many different methods and so many different catalysts to do to do the employing of it. Now I've encountered several people, several hands in my targeting and my targeting when I, when I look back in hindsight and it's something I'm learning every every day. I learn from other people. I discovered a um, a website on, on YouTube called TITV and I was really impressed by the soberness of this guy and the, these um, four I think it's four individuals I've only watched two or three videos but I was quite impressed and inspired by you know just by the soberness of their experiences and um, I have to as a Christian I have to remain separate because I, I 
know that the flesh eventually lets us down. You can't trust on people for support. But I was very impressed with uh, this gentleman because of his knowledge, his experience and his soberness. And I, I only hope that they remain standing and they don't go off truth and, and um, go off track and lead people astray because you can have all the knowledge but what I realised is that knowledge is only going to wake people up to the slaughter and that's why I remain separate because the only important thing in life is your salvation. Now you, you can have all the understanding but it's not going to get you anywhere. It might it might give you an understanding, but then where do you go from there? You're just going to and fro, and, and you've got nobody to turn to. You can't rely on people. You can, you can rely on the information they give, and that's a good thing, and I want to hold that up and commend that. Um, and that's really why I wanted to add, add my thoughts. Not to muscle in on, on the, the efforts, but just to, just to support those efforts with my own accounts. Now, I don't really want to blur the lines with my experiences because they're quite diverse. But I can tell you that targeting is a reality. And now, there's many reasons for that. You could have been targeted at birth, you may have been spitefully put on a targeting list or, or you may have upset someone or you may be perceived by the government as a, a disruptor of, or, or, of their so-called lawfulness and because you know the governments are fearful they're, they're made up as failed fallen human beings they're not perfect and they make mistakes now i'm not anti-government per se i'm anti-liars but i am a, a law you know i am lawful i believe in you know sticking to the law and i don't hold out for any just in, uh, justice to be done because the whole world's corrupt the whole world today is in bed with the powers that be you know within europe and at that, if you do some investigation and you, you, you need to map the pieces together and like I've stated, you've got to start with the truth in Jesus Christ you need, you need to repent, you need to have a change of mind and you need to save your soul and that is the foundation of all truth and wisdom you know, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and then you can start to put your knowledge and all the information in perspective because without that perspective as i said before you'll get lost and when you do some investigation you'll see that at the top is the roman catholic church and the jesuits and and, and they're in thick behind the scenes of that church front you'll have the jesuits the pope the uh, Illuminati bankers and they run they control the Freemasons now the Catholic Church are more than likely the people that planted the seed for Islam to create the bogeyman and every government to use that the CIA invest in the Al-Qaeda we've allowed Islam into this country and, and it's just a diverse tool to create you know to water down our national, national, nationality and our to integrate, integrate falsely and milk us down to rob us of our, our freedoms and our country. Now, I'm not a racist, you know, I'm, I love all people, but I don't believe that you can mix people falsely in the name of political ends. It, it's wrong, it's false, and it just doesn't work. It's a, it's a political move and some some vain ideas to get their idea on the table and that's what we're dealing with and that's what you're dealing with in the world it's never going to get any better it's getting worse these people are getting more brazen so if you're a targeted individual that would be my advice so that i have a good rapport and a relationship with jesus christ now i'm not ashamed of him i'm not going to deny that I, I, you know I, as a young christian i was fearful i was fighting to speak out and and the Lord will chastise you, you know, you just can't, you can't muck around with the truth, it's the truth, it's a rock. And uh, you need to get a, a, your own report of that. And, and that's what I'm inviting, is just to search your soul, evaluate yourself, be honest with yourself, and look at the world. You know, that's, don't kid yourself, it's going to get better, you're going to get justice. 
you know, you may get justice for a time by these people realising and, 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 and you can change people's minds and you can enlighten people and that can make a big difference. But you're never going to get world justice. You're never going to get, um, it's never going to go away because this world is run by Lucifer, the devil. And that's because of Jesus Christ has been rejected because of unbelief, because people think, oh, the Bible's a load of nonsense. Well, it's not. I have a good report. I have a personal relationship. I've been saved over 20 years. And, and, the, and the Lord is faithful. He's never let me down. Now, I'm not talking about religion and churches. I don't go to church. Church is in the believer's heart. Wherever that believer is and wherever that believer meets another stranger or believer in Christ, the church body is a living organic body. It's not about religion, it's about faith in Christ alone. So that's my invitation and targeting is just one of those fruits today. Now, targeting is not, there's nothing new under the sun. Targeting's been around for centuries, it's a technique to get rid you, you know, just look at um, Nazi Germany, and, and then you'll see the Catholic Church behind that. If you look at the targeting in Israel in the time of Christ, and, you know, going back all through histories, it's the same people, just a different face. It's the Roman Empire, and, you know, and, and the Jewish law. Now, the law is what give, gave, gave um, the truth. It was the God of... The God of Abraham and Isaac taught um, these people, these, this race of people, the, the rock, the truth, righteousness, how to, look, how to have an independent nation, an independent government. And if it wasn't for Israel and Jesus Christ, we wouldn't have the world we have, to, we have today. We wouldn't have our liberties, we wouldn't have our freedoms. Now, England is founded on the king... Christian principles and, and lawfully later on the King James Holy Bible it's a lawful book it's what kings it's what kings swear on on the coronation now they don't today because they the Catholic Church have injected all these false Bibles and they've changed it by intellectual opinion and design to war, to keep, keep people away from the preserved word of God and all these intellectuals who aren't even Christians most of them I might add have corrupted the word to cause confusion and divisions. And that's the game of Satan and evil people that don't believe. They will use religion, they will, they will use Christianity for their own ends. You can, you can see so many examples of it. You, you go and interview these people from church, a lot of these vicars, they don't believe that it's a career choice, they're, they're deceived and they're deceivers. An organised religion has been infiltrated by the powers that be that are evil. So I would, I would um, flag up caution when you're putting your trust in flesh. And um, if you do find yourself as a targeted individual, it can cause you a lot of despair. They can really psychologically destroy you. And the people who do it are expendable. Some of them are just sick, narcissistic people who do it for nothing. And you've got, di you've got diverse groups, and then you've got um, two arms who, who, are, who are used for targeting. Now, now, this could be military intelligence, it could be uh, people that have been recruited behind the scenes, like the MI5 recruit, the CIA recruit, they approach people secretly and they tell them lies to get them to... They have to believe what they're doing, that, that they deceive people that believe they're doing a community service in, 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 in the name of God, in the name of justice and righteousness. So otherwise people wouldn't target you. And I'm talking about conscientious people. And then you've got the other arm, which is like Satanists and covens and, and sick people like that who will do it, who will do it from an organised, um, they, they will need a, a green light to go ahead and target people. So it's organised, but you've got different arms of it. So wherever you find yourself, it can be, it, it, it really destroy your life. So anyone who's discovered that they are a target, I just want to say, don't, don't be despair, don't, don't give in to despair and hope. And, uh, 
would be wrong of me not to share the, 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 uh, my testimony of Jesus Christ, and that is your foundation. You really need saving first. Now, you can survive. You may be strong enough to survive it, but how long are you going to take it, and, and where are you going down the road? Where is it leading? Because you can go off track, and you can cause a lot of other people to go off track. So, people to be very, you know, to seek wisdom, to seek understanding and not not put your trust too much in, in other people. Listen to what they say and measure it for yourself and investigate your truth and uh, try and get on with your life because it will, I've been under it, it's really uh, dis nearly destroyed me quite a few times. I've, I've been pulling my hair out, despair, getting angry. Now, I've got a history of um, childhood abuse, and one of my weaknesses is that it's anger because of injustice, and I have to put that aside. And I've just learned in, in my later years is to just suffer it. It's just a part of reality. I'm not a hero. I'm not, a, I'm not blowing my trumpet, but it's only through Jesus Christ that I've been able to get through some of the trials and some of the afflictions and persecutions. And that's having that peace of mind, that's given me the peace of mind. That doesn't take my frustration away, and my pain, and my, and my wounding, and my anger, and wanting to get these people and bash their heads together, and, and worse than that, believe you me. Um, but it's the Lord that sustained me and helped me deal with those emotions and that anger. And he gives you peace, he gives you light, he gives you comfort, he gives you joy, he gives you love. He gives you an abundance of life in this wicked, evil world. And that's really what my heart is trying to offer to people in my weakness. And, and just to um, educate yourself and not give up in despair, because it is a reality and it's getting worse. Because it's rolling out the... The time of uh, revelation, if you study revelation, there's going to be a one world government. It's going to be controlled. You're either in it or you're out of it. And this is what we're going through, the sifting of the sheep from the goats. And you can find yourself in the valley of indecision. And that's where most targeted individuals are. They're, they're in, they're, they, the, the truth set them free, but they haven't quite fully... They're not founded on the truth. They have the truth, but they will be, you know, they're lost like everyone else, like I was. You're lost. And if you depend on that, it, it's not going to be the solution for everyone. Because the um, if people rely on, on that solely, they, you know, you get, everyone's human and they're, they're up the line, you get uh, personality clashes, you get clicks, you could get infiltrated and you get misinformation chucked in there to make it more confusing. But these people have experience and knowledge and that's, that's one of the things I wanted to hold up and, and encourage because that's a good thing. You know, any, anything good in this world is from God. You know, all truth, we, we all know truth from rubbish. It, it's just a question of being humble and open to learning and to, to be um, willing to be corrected when you're wrong and to say, oh, I've made a mistake here, I'm wrong. And, and if you're open to learning, you'll always grow. I'm always growing and learning every day when I... Well, not every day, <laughs> When, when, I, when I'm focused, when I'm being obedient to all the things I've, the disciplines I've needed to learn, and that's one of the things you need, you need being a targeted individual is discipline, and you need a sober head, and that's something I've not got. I'm an emotional, rational person, so I've had to learn through, through all the trials and errors how to be disciplined and not let it eat me and destroy me, because it will put you right under. It will flush you down the toilet round the U-bend and it will close the lid on you. So anyone who's going through it, tearing their hair out, now you're not going to be able to avoid those trials and that, and that but it's, some, it's something you can get through and you can overcome and you can outgrow it. And that's one of the things that impressed me about 
what I saw on, on YouTube about the targeted individuals. That's, a, a, that, that's the first real person I think I've seen online about targeted individuals that I've come across that gave a sober account. I couldn't fault his advice. So I am currently, you know, I would hold that up as a resource. And there's many resources um, you can go to. Uh, Barry Trower. Or go, I, I've personally looked for people who have experiences on both sides of the fence. People who've done the targeting. People who know all the technology exists. And, it, and once you look, you can piece the dots together. But getting all the knowledge is not going to make it go away. It's just going to spike. Wait. It's going to equip you to, you know, just to get your feet on the ground and to stand and to get through the day. So that, that, that's my thoughts. Um, I'll probably add some scriptures just to back up what I've said. But if you are questioning it and wondering if is it real, it is real. It is it, if, and you'll, the more you look, the more you'll see it's real. And my advice would be to just investigate and get um, good knowledge and get two or three witnesses of the same thing and line it up on the table and build up your knowledge base of what's going on and filter out all the rubbish, all the, all, you know, all the personal opinions and things like that. And, and, and that will give you a, a stable footing. I'm going to leave it there, so I've got some uh, dogs coming, and my dog's not a very friendly dog. This is what I'd like to do to the targeted uh, perps. simply means unbelieving, the unbelieving people, and there's degrees of wickedness. Without Christ, we're all wicked. So, um, if you're one of those people, and you come across a born-again Christian in the rock, you, you, the Lord will overturn you, he'll judge you, he'll judge you for what you're doing. He may let it continue, because of free choice, a free agency, and he's a merciful God. He he judges he judges people incrementally. He's patient and long suffering towards people. But there come a point where he, he put his he put his foot down and he'll turn you right over and judge you. Now it's a fearful thing to come under a just holy God, to come under the to come under the judgment of a just holy God. It may be your life moment on earth. So I would warn those people who A, inspire these nets and people that serve these people who, who um, orchestrate and perpetrate the netting, they will fall in it and they will come across it. But to those people who are not on Christ, you're, you're going to be continually persecuted by these people until they get their own way until they overthrow you and destroy you because that's what's behind Satan he, want, he just wants to kill people and lead people's souls down to hell and that is the bottom line if you deny that, you deny that at your own peril 
So if you're one of those perpetrators, you're being used and deceived, and you, you are causing misery to thousands of people's lives. Now this is a global exercise. It all ties in with M MK Ultra and the world powers, the you know the Masons, the Illuminati, the Jesuits, all, all the wicked people that uh, sit around the tabletop. Now they might not all know each other, it's one ambiguous hand and body of evil and wickedness and that's why it's so confusing, that's why no one's going to get a full detailed blueprint of what's actually going on. You're going to get pieces of information here, pieces of information there from testimonies for other people's, you know, sake. now testimonies of other people uh, have been a great help to me and that's really why I'm adding, adding mine and I'm trying through experience I'm trying not to muddy the waters and just to keep it simple just to say that targeting is a reality I can't say what your reality is but what I can say is you can work your reality out and with Jesus Christ, you're able to get a clear, clearer picture of your circumstance to, under, to make sense of it, or begin to make sense of it, and put the pieces together. If you're one of those perpetrators, I, I, you know, I, and you've come across this video, I would invite you to search your soul and question, what, are you doing any good? Would you like it done to you? Because it's like being in a cage and having someone stick a stick in you and jab it in you. And sometimes it's not just one one or two, it's a whole group of people. Now I've been ta targeted by V2K um, covert groups all around me that have become over and I've been on all sorts of programs. I don't know the full picture and the intentions, I just know that they weren't good. And these are people that are playing with other people's lives, thinking that they own you, thinking that they run the human race. Now they're not, they're not Jews, like you don't want to listen to the conspiracy, conspiracy theories that oh it's the Jews, you know these banking elite aren't the real Jews, you know, they, they might have, a, you might, there might be a bit of Jewish blood dotted in there, but they're converts to Judaism, they're not, they're not the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham are more than likely the people who are suffering and scattered all over the place. There may be one or two of the seed of Israel involved in it, but it's not all Jews. What you need to get through your, through your brains is that it's the Catholic Church. It's the world powers in bed with the Catholic Church. They're like the Mafia. They even own the Mafia. When you look at it, all the evil from this world go... You read a... Revelation chapter 18, and you read the last verse of that chapter. It's 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 all them, and I, and like I say, if you don't believe the Bible, then you you show me where the answer is, other than all the confusion and all the truth. You'll get truth, but what good is that truth in the right jigsaw puzzle box of the truth? You need the whole truth, and you can't see the whole truth unless you you know God, and then you will begin to see the whole truth. So, if you're if you're one of those perks, I just invite you to repent, because you you will be judged for what your actions. Now, it might not stop the targeting, and it might not make a difference, but I've seen these people overturned, and they they're te you know they turn a penny, and and they change shift. And that, that crew moves off and another and another foreign body is put in their place to continue in the targeting. So the targeting is directed by evil powers behind the scenes who use other people like like I, I just showed you, like dog's mess in a, in a bag. And, and they, they expend both people. They just use people to hurt other people and that's another thing you need to understand. It, for peace of mind, otherwise it would destroy you, all the injustice, it is unjust, it's wicked. But we're under condemnation, it's just for God to judge us. Now he's merciful in his judgement, so if you are suffering, I, I would invite you to search your soul and, 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 and just realise the truth.
Okay, uh, just to go over some thoughts at the end of the day on my TI video, I've written some notes, so I'd just like to cover a few things and add some scriptures and some just some ideas and experience and uh, invite people not, not to trust what I say, but to, because I could be wrong, I've made mistakes before. But just to consider the things I say and uh, examine the, the truth for yourself because um, I personally don't believe any person needs to be told what the truth is. They really just need to apply themselves and study it through and, that, and that's how I learned the truth. Um, so now, now they say that um, no man's an island. Well, I, I'm quite an independent person. So I liken myself to an island, but that doesn't mean I'm, you know, I, I don't mix with other people. I, I I just stand on my own ground and I, I have my own mind and I don't listen to the whistles and bells and the voice that tries to condition the way we think. You know, I've been raised under that. I've been affected by that, just like every other culture and young gener generation growing up under this world with all the sponsored corporate influence and the all the think tanks and all the political trumpet blowing trying to blow the truth of course so um, I wanted to just add my uh, testimony of tar a targeted being a targeted individual for other targeted individuals and other within the community of targeted individuals and just a few thoughts on the subject now there's a just to emphasize what I'm saying because the political voice is that we should all hold hands together now I'm very very wary of that because I know it's a deceptive subtle lie because you can't sit around the table with thieves and robbers and crooks and murderers and liars and all this voice is oh we should unite now, I think we should unite on the truth, but as a body of people, it's, it's dangerous because you you can't trust, you know, you can't trust me, you can't, I can't even trust myself. You, the flesh will let you down, your own understanding will let you down, other people will let you down. They might not let you down most of the time, uh, but eventually we all, you know, we're, we're human and we're fa we've got failings and we do let, you know, when you, when you form a big body of people, you know, uh, things go wrong. You only have to look at history uh, to determine that. And there's a wonderful uh, saying, it was, I, s I learnt it in, um, you ever seen that uh, documentary Band of Brothers, that BBC film they made on the 101st Airborne? And I've actually read the books and of the, the actual historical accuracies of, of that part of the battle in the, well, the theatre of World War Two. And there is a famous saying that that these men trained at in their training camp, and they used to run up a hill, a mountain, and I think the mountain was called Karahi, and they used to chant this. Um, they adopted this name for their uh, regiment or battalion or pl platoon, whatever whatever the right phrase is. And Karahi was a Navajo Indian word called, uh, which translates to something like "alone we stand together." And I think that's um, quite a good analogy of, you know, the United Kingdom. We're a, we're we're an island. We're an independent nation. And uh, so I'm very aware, wary of when people, when the, when the voices, you know, we can all, we should be tolerant. Well, you can't tolerate what's wrong. You know, good can't accept what's wrong. So I'm very cautious of that voice. Um, and, and especially when people are victims and they're seeking answers and, they, and these platforms form up. And they put their trust in it to go to go for edification and support, and that that's all well and good to start with. But these things become corrupted. Uh, human beings let other human beings down. So, 
there's only a small minority that gets the help and there's a, a big fallout behind that people don't see or consider or appreciate and when they start these platforms they're, they're starting them blindly they don't know how it's going to unfold how it's going to take off and that will become very difficult to steer the ship especially when you've got um, you know a lot of chiefs involved and you know so I saw this in the basis project with uh, Miles Johnson and all the um, MK Ultra, and it got saturated with all, all this uh, UFO stuff and all this other fantasy stuff and all the lizards and it really muddied the waters and and then further up the line you get all these sponsored hands involved and misinformation. Um, a lot, like a lot of this misinformation is deliberately planted there, and it and it, to overturn to keep the truth down. So that that's one thing you've got to be caution cautious of, especially for people seeking genuine help. So um, that's one thing I'm very wary of. And these people end up, they may potentially end up selling out or or, or trusting in an, an investor, which which they feel obliged to toe their line, you know, there's compromises made and, and and the only people that suffer is the individual trusting in the compromise and the people that they're trying to help. So that's one of the reasons I, I kind of stand alone, I stand independently and plus I'm a born again Christian, it's a, um, it's a commandment of the Lord to stay separate from from the world. I'm not against the world. It, it it's just it's just the right thing to do when you when you're saved. You, you you're saved from that world. You're saved from that lifestyle and that mindset. And you're you're given a new life. And it's important to keep that separate. And plus, I have um, post traumatic stress and vulnerabilities. It, you know, that's a double a double wise reason why I, I'm very wary of putting my trust in people. And because I, I know that people can't be trusted ultimately. You might be able to trust people occasionally, but you can't trust all. The, you can't trust people ultimately and all the time. I actually worked in the mental health care system, and I saw the fallout there. Just like I see the fallout where, wherever I look and apply my heart and mind. And, and my understanding of what the Word of God's taught me about human nature within myself and when I've, with other people. So, um, you know, don't trust what I say or what other pe people's opinions are, but it's important to examine things for yourself to discover what, what is actually the truth. And there's a, a really good saying, like, there's truth in all buckets of sand. You know, there's gold in all but, but buckets of sand. It might only be a few grains, but if you dig dig through every, if you dig through it, you'll find truth in everything. The devil, the devil knows more truth than most people. He knows more about the Bible than most people. Excuse me, and he's the one behind organised religion. He knows the Bible. He knows what words to say, the right things to say, in the how to deceive people with the with the truth but it's all it's it's got part error mixed with it so you've got to be so careful you, that's why you need a relationship with christ and the holy spirit to and god the father because the holy spirit will filter out it, it might not be instant but once you apply yourself and study it through and, and you learn the scriptures you learn to discern between what is true from what is error what is opinion what is actually fact now you don't solely need that to, but you need the, the Holy Spirit is a witness of all truth upon all consciences. But to have fellowship with that Holy Spirit continually, you need you need um, Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm going to put down a few scriptures um, of the basic plan of salvation, and just reaffirm some of the things I've spoken on the on the video. Um, so I, I had a few notes and thoughts. Um, Let's go to the word. <clears throat> now, there's so, this is such a rich book. The King James Bible is so rich. Everything you need to know 
it's preserved in this word. It's a complete book. It's um, a book of prophecy, a book of truth, the book of the heart, mind and will and God. And there's an application in this book for every single circumstance in life. Now, you might have to dig deep to find it, but the, the, this book is just like a, a stream of living water. Everything that needs to be said has been said. It's all preserved in this book. You cannot add or take away to it. it it's a complete standard record, and it's preserved in the authorised King James Bible. And it is, a, in fact, a believer's final authority. You don't need a a bishop or a priest or a or a leader to teach you that there's only one leader and that is Jesus Christ and every every believer has has that as a free gift the the moment that they appropriate his atonement and they call upon him in faith and believe they are they are sealed by the holy spirit and the holy spirit will lead people into into truth and and that goes hand in hand with the word of god so I'm going to share a few scriptures that have um, built me up and taught me everything I know that is worth knowing and how to find all the truth in the world out, out of all the testimonies, out of all the opinions and out of all the knowledge. Knowledge is important, people's testimonies are important, truth's important, but without that standard you can get confused, you can be deceived, you can be overthrown so you really do need that that rock to be founded on you know not and not founded on sand or uncertainty or not knowing leaning upon your own understanding because your own understanding and the things you learn is not enough you need the foundation and that foundation is Jesus Christ he's a rock he's a living God um, so I'm going to turn to Proverbs uh, chapter 3 and I'm going to read verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord. And apart from evil. Uh, verse 1, I'll read one verse. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So it's quite evident if you trust on the Lord's understanding, he would direct your paths. And, and to know the Lord is to fear the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. That The gospel is simply repentance towards God. I read the scriptures. Repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I read a few scriptures because it takes faith. You, you can't go with sight and intellectual understanding. You can't lean on your own understanding. It's a spiritual truth, it's a spiritual understanding. And that spiritual understanding only, only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the light. He's the light upon our conscience. He's the light who come, come from heaven, the word. The word of the living God. The testimony of the living God. And he's the truth and the light. And the only way you can get that light is through him. There's no other way. Um, Acts 20 verse 21 testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ that is simply the gospel in a nutshell um, I'll read a few more scriptures uh, the book of James uh, I read verse 5 if any any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering that's important because if you doubt you know God's not going to hear you he's not going to answer you he's not going to answer wishy-washiness he needs commitment he needs faith and trust and belief 
And if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and believe, recognising you're a sinner and you're no good and you're lost, and you call upon him, he'll save you that moment. He, that's his promise and he's faithful to his promise. But you can only you can only reach God and know God through faith. And the only the only place you can place that faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me read some more scriptures. Um, because without it, there's a scripture, I'm not sure where it is. It says anything that is without faith is sin, and so sin is unbelief. Unbelief, and not putting your not putting your trust in the foundation, in the rock. Anything other than that is sin. Uh, this is what uh, Jesus said, said, Jesus Christ said, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave commandment. Now, the, now a lot of Christians, or a lot of churches teach uh, the laws, you know, love thy name, um, do not steal, do not murder. Now, all the law is fulfilled in Christ. It's not over. But that part of living righteously by your own works is over because none of us are, uh, can live righteously because we're, we're all sinners. So the law was to convict people of sin, to keep them in line, to keep Israel in line for the Messiah coming, Jesus Christ, and he fulfilled the law. So if you put your trust and faith in him, he'll give you his love and that will enable you to keep the law, establish the law and live by the law. So you don't, there's no need for the temple sacrifices today. We live by faith in, in he who fulfilled the law and sharpened the law and, and gives us the law freely. And that is to just basically love. God is love. He's the author and finisher of love. And Jesus Christ came in the fullness of God with that love and died for the sins of the world. He, he became sin for us because we're all sinners and we're all guilty. So you can liken it to like a judge. And you stand at the being judged of your sin. And, and he's got and justice, God is just, he's also merciful, but he's just, you can't rob him of his justice, only, only, only Christ can pay the demands of justice, and he did, and uh, that, that affords us redemption and mercy for our sins, Jesus Christ will forgive us of our sins, all of our sins, past, present and future, now that doesn't justify us after we're saved to continue sinning but if we do sin we have that advocate with God to be forgiven to brought back into that fellowship and love and forgiveness and uh, have that um, have that renewal of our spirit have that fellowship with God have that keep that peace so we can be upheld um, now if you if you imagine you're standing before a judge at the end of your life because when we die that's when we that's uh, uh, you know you can you can carry a record of your whole life your whole life and when you die that's when you realize your judgment so if you die unsaved you die in your sin and the judgment you will receive will be hell now it would be just for you to receive that if you haven't accepted the mercy of God's Son, of Jesus Christ, because he suffered all of our sins. So if you're, you imagine you're standing before a judge and he passes sentence and, 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 and the verdict and the punishment you're to receive, and at that point, if you, if you have Jesus Christ as your attorney or you're a lawyer to step in, he will say to the judge, I will take that punishment for this, this person and he will take, he's taken the punishment, he's suffered all sin, all of the pain and misery of every single man, woman and child that's ever graced this earth in the past and in the future. Because he's God, he was able to take all of that upon himself. He took, he suffered that in Gethsemane and he took that to the cross. And when he died, 
suffering all those sins for the all the sins of the world he went down into hell and put off all those sins down there and then he then he because he was god he had the power to overcome death and death couldn't hold him because he was life he was the author and finisher of life by god the father all the worlds and this earth was created by him he's the he's a creator he's the son of god and he was able to suffer all those sins and result he's resolved all the problems in the world all the injustice all the you know all the guilt all the pain and misery although it hasn't taken it away it will it, it's ended in him and it ended on the cross 2000 years ago and that's what needs to be appropriated by sincere faith and repentance now repentance is just to change your mind to look in that direction to look to the cross, realise you're a sinner and say, Lord, have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. And that's what saves you. He will save you. He's already saved the whole world. But it, you need faith to appropriate what he has already done. If you reject that, you will die lost. And that's why so many people are going to hell. Now, it's not a nice thing to preach hell. But all these churches, they don't teach it. They teach a wishy-washy, watered-down gospel. And they're all compromised and in bed with the evil powers of the world who all hold hands together. And it's full of corruption and wickedness. So I wanted to read those scriptures. And I'm going to read um, John chapter 3. I think it's in... John chapter 3 is an important chapter. Um... Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. And that's talking to people who've appropriated the Lord's atonement. You become a child of God, a son or a daughter of God, the living God. He adopts you, he gives you his spirit, he gives you his life. The free gift of eternal life is sealed the moment you call upon him and believe. And, and you're given the gift, the faithful promise of the Holy Spirit, which remains with you. It indwells the believer. This is the church. This is the bride. Um, Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So the world doesn't recognise this truth, because it's lost, and it doesn't know Jesus Christ. Beloved, now, you, now are we the sons... I'm reading the wrong book. No, I'm reading First John. I, re I need the uh, book of John. Right, let's go to John three. That's an important book as well. But that, that that's mainly for believers who have been saved. And it's a believer's book. That's why the work, That's why it's not understood. That's why it's easily dismissed as intellectual rubbish because they're looking for fault. They're not looking for Jesus Christ, they're looking for faults. And they don't know Jesus Christ, so therefore they don't know his book. You need to be a believer to un begin to understand the book, and you need to study it daily to be refreshed in, in what it is you've been taught and given. Um, right. Saint, it's, it's titled Saint John, uh, but saint just means a believer, somebody who's saved it. That, that, that's the, that's the proper term for a saint. It just simply means a believer. It doesn't mean you're saint. You know, you're saintly and you've done. That's a Catholic thing, and the Catholics kill the real saints. Um, they're not. They're, you know, there may be a, a few Catholic believers, but the whole church is corrupt. It's an evil political body in bed with the world. Uh, it's not Christianity. They don't speak for Christians. They don't speak for Bible-believing Christians. And that, and that's why Bible-believing Christians get pushed out. They don't get in... They don't get mainstream voices and platforms to go on telly and speak the gospel because the world doesn't want the gospel on stage because it will teach the truth. It will teach against the world. And this is what the scripture, John 3 explain so uh, it's an important scripture to read there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews now now the pharisees and the Sad sadducees were two different schools of, of 
faith and practice, they were divided in the Jewish elders. And they, they had become apostate and uh, introduced traditions that they'd learned from their captivity in the Babylonian Empire. So they were in iniquity and they were in bed with the Roman, you know, the Roman um, dominant forces of the world of that day, you know, like the Julius Caesar. And Rome had captivated Jerusalem and it's very much like the same today. Now, the Roman Empire it's just remorphed into Christianity with a face of Christianity. It's called the Roman Catholic Church, and that's on the earth today. It's the same power. It's just changed its face. And they, they, they are the ones who hover around Israel and Jerusalem, and they, and they compromise people within Jerusalem, like they compromise people within all governments and of all nations. Now all nations, there's not one righteous nation on the earth. And Israel is particularly persecuted. Now I'm not saying Israel are guiltless, but there's not a nation on this earth that isn't guilty of crimes against humanity. Even our own country, our own government, turn a blind eye to the abuse of civilians. And, they, and it's and, and they, they they raise people up to compromise and be fearful and they feed these people and provide for these people and these people are in a, in a compromise and they can't speak the truth because they're, they're party with it, they're yoked to it, we're all born yoked to it. The only way we can be set free from it is in, through Jesus Christ, he will, the truth will set you free. So the whole world is guilty. There's not one, not one nation that is just to go and go and cause war or be a peacemaker. We're all we're all guilty as guilty as another one. Now some of us are more guilty than others, you know, are grant, granted. But uh, this scripture will um, re reveal that truth. What, what I'm saying. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So what Jesus is saying, unless you're born again, that's born of the flesh is, is when you're born. Born of water is your first birth, uh, blood and water, when, you, when you're conceived and then you're given birth to. Um, that's your first birth. Your second birth is a spiritual birth. Now you can only, you can only be spiritually born, born again through Jesus Christ, through his spirit through the Holy Spirit. And that's what this is talking about, to be born again. And, and except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he was explaining that to one of the, le the Jewish leaders of that time, one of the Jewish elders and teachers. And he was teaching him that, that, that important principle. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He see he couldn't comprehend it because he didn't. It had never been spoken of or taught before, so it was. It, it, it just fell on deaf ears. Nicodemus said, I mean, "How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born?" Jesus answered, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit." he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But can, but can, can us not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth? So is every one that is born of the spirit, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we know, and testify that w what we have seen, that we, we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is a condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptised. And John also was baptising in Aon, Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptised. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptise, baptiseth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy thereof, thereof is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testified, testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony, hath set his seal that God is true. For, who, for he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, that's quite clear that the world doesn't comprehend spiritual things, and it remains under condemnation for rejecting the Son of God. Now, God, God is a just God and he's patient and long-suffering, and the whole world has been convicted by the light of Jesus Christ. But as the scriptures say, the light doesn't want to know the truth. It ra it rather remain in its ignorance and darkness and sin, and do what it likes. And that's why the world is under condemnation. That's why we've got a bad world, because people will not do the right thing. Now, some there's good in all of us, but we're also inherently evil, and it's always the dominant of evil that runs the world because they will cut corners, they will cheat and lie and murder to get their own way. So there's no, we're never going, you're never going to get world peace. So any good thing will always be disrupted and it will be overturned by the enemy. That's why you can't all hold hands for world peace with like all sorts of perversions and corruptions and liars. And the people behind it, sponsoring it, it just, it's just going to fail. 
So that's really why I wanted to warn about the most important things of salvation, not making this world a better place. Because you're not going to make, if you look at things honestly and you evaluate history, you'll see that all good things get disrupted and they get corrupted and they get spoiled by the evil, wicked people. And it's no different today than it has been throughout of history because it's in man's nature. We're all sinners. We all fall from that perfect, sustaining that perfect truth and grace in our lives. We can't help it because we've inherited that from our parents as they've inherited, inherited it from their parents. And that goes all the way back to the fall of mankind. Now you can argue about evolution, you know, we've evolved through the human race with sin. We haven't evolved through, from chaos, we've evolved from order because we're created from an orderly wise God. And because we strayed from that, we have chaos, we have pain and misery and confusion. And that's why the world's under con condemnation. So that's really my invitation, is to repent, to seek the living God and be saved. It is that simple. And as soon as you call upon him sincerely in faith, you will be saved. And he's, he's faithful and just. But you need to put your trust and faith in, that, in, in him to know that for yourself. Because there's no other way. It, it, it's that simple. So... I've wrote, wrote a few no, uh, notes down that I wanted to about um, just my experiences with um, being a targeted individual. Now, I, I've put some notes, uh, editing my video, what I've made this morning. Um, I put, I've, I've covered most of it on text notes, putting it over the video. So I haven't really got much, much to add. Um, uh, oh yeah. There's um, just a few thoughts about about films. Now, if you've seen the film The Matrix, uh, there's a man in there called the Key Man. Now, if you look at The Matrix, and like I said about the analogy, there's like truth in all all things. You know, you can find the truth even in creativity and and fiction, you know, like sci-fi, sci you can find truth in all things. Now, there's a truth in that film. It's quite quite a good analogy. It's not complete. It's not perfect. But there is some truth in that film. Now, the key man has access all areas. Now, there's people in this world that, through the lines of the law and authority, they can appear as... You know, on one face that they're they're good, but but they have from the top they have access to all avenues, and this is how Freemason works. It gets its fingers in all pies, then it then it forms a network, then it gets people in key positions, and so that's how they can control all avenues by having key people in key positions. So that I'd like to liken that film into a truth and for you to examine that to see the reality, how the world is dominated and how key people can be placed in positions to control a larger group, to handle events of, of what goes on under the noses of a, of a lawful government and a corrupt government. Now, governments fluctuate and what the enemy seeks to do is overcome the government by giving the government a bad name and create lawlessness. So that's one thing as a targeted individual you've got to be aware of. Now you might not get any injustice with the law, but it's no, as soon as you break the law, you're just as guilty. And we're all guilty if we haven't received Jesus Christ's forgiveness. We're under condemnation. So none of us have really got any any right foot to stand on you know we might not think we've done anything wrong but we're all part of the problem we're all part of the rotten bowl of fruit there's good bits in it and there's bad bits in it and, it, and we need 
it needs to be recognised that, that we're sinners. And targeted individuals are just in the mix of that injustice in the world. And that's one of the ways the Lord brings people unto himself is through trials and judgments of the wicked, the consequences of wickedness. And then when a the person calls upon him, he's able to remove them out of the out of the out of the teeth of it and move them over to safer ground. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that you're problems will stop or your persecutions will stop but he will put you on a straight path and you'll be able to cut through those persecutions he will carry you through those because he's suffered all things and he's, he's triumphed he's been victorious and he'll give you a testimony of that victory he will give you that victory yourself that will give you peace that will give you strength that will build you up that will keep you in good stead if you continue in faith, as you did from the first moment you called upon him and believed, if you carry on believing, he's faithful in his promise to, get you, to deliver you to the end of your life. And when you die, you'll go straight to heaven to be with him. But without him you die, your judgment's just, you'll go to hell. Now that's not a very nice thing to say, but it, it's just a matter of the truth. God can't deny himself, he's a just God. Like if your parents said to you, stay off the railway line, children, you know, you, you, A, you could get knocked down by a train, or you could electrocute yourself and fry to death. Now, your parents wouldn't wish that on you. If you disobeyed your parents, that, 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 would be, that would, could be a potential consequence and a just one for you for disobeying the rules of your parents and the advice they gave you. And God is no different. He's not an evil God. He's a merciful, outstretched, feeling God. He feels everything. Because of the wickedness and unbelief of the world, and these wicked people in, in the dark, in secret, that love, that love dominance and owning and having a more of a proportion and keeping it all to themselves, that's why the world's unjust, it's called iniquity, it's set up in iniquity, the whole world is established in iniquity, and if you're part of it, you're compromised because you're lost and you don't know any different, so you're just as guilty as they are, but in a lesser degree, the whole world is guilty and remains under condemnation, and that's the warning of the gospel, so what the Lord said, warn your neighbour of the consequences to come. Now these consequences happen on a daily basis, they happen continually until the final judgment and that's when you die. And then there'll be a final judgment on the world of the outpouring of God's wrath and that, that, that day is approaching, it's called Jacob's Trouble. It's, it's the start of the book of Revelation or the seals within the book of Revelation being opened and unfolded. That period is upon us. The Jews have returned to their land. Now the Jews are the seed of Jacob. So it's Jacob's trouble. The focus is going to be turned on Jacob. The whole world's going to gather around Israel to destroy it. And the main perpetrators of that is the Roman Catholic Church and all these powerful people. They're going to be the inspiration and the if you look at the history of, of the fom fomenting of wars that you study Albert Pike and the Freemasons and the Illuminati, you go up the line, it's to the Jesuits, look at Adolf Hitler. He was knit like that with a Pope. And he, he built the Third Reich from the Jesuit model. And that's fact, you can investigate this yourself. It's the same powers today you look at the Crusades, and, you know, against the Muslims. That was to throw Christians against Muslims. So you got the one body playing both hands. You know the Heligian dialect. You know the the feces, the antithesis, and the synthesis, the remedy that they're waiting for. So they play one hand against the other. Look at ISIS and Al Qaeda. It's the same game being played and. That's something that needs to be understood. And targeted individuals come under, come under all this. It's all, it's all inter, interwoven. I haven't got all the answers. You know, I don't know everything. I'm, I've, I've had to learn like everybody else. 
who, who wakes up to the well, what's going on around them and this targeting and then you'll see it's a big world global net and my personal thoughts are it's sifting people it's targeting people that they deem that aren't going to be compliant or it might there's so many reasons it might be a case of you just expendable people that you, you, you're going to be tested upon you know, I don't know all the answers and who makes the decisions and who calls the shots and all the people involved. It's a big ambiguous body and it fluctuates, it changes. But one thing that doesn't change is the simplicity of the truth. It's consistent, it's faithful, it's true. True means it's true, it's straight. And that's what I'm trying to get across in this uh, targeted individual testimony and and to be honest the whole world is targeted in some way or at some point in their life but today it's more prevalent that's why we're seeing these the label targeted individual mk ultra they're all labels to that people can identify to and they cross and merge not every targeted in, individual is part of mk ultra and not everyone who's on mk ultra necessarily ends up a targeted individual. A lot, a lot of good people are just simply targeted because they're perhaps they're good people and the people in power are, uh, are the people that are evil because they're dominating, they're taking up the seats of all the p positions, they're getting into position and anyone who's good they want off, they want them out because they're going to speak up against these people. So all the conscientious people are getting thrown off the bus and that's probably one of the reasons you're targeted, you're profiled. Now the Catholic Church psychologically profiles and maps people and it wants to map everybody. It wants to dominate and control every, every, all your thoughts, everything, to get you in its purse, to get you in its pocket. And it uses other people in the same way to do the same job towards this one world government. It's all there's nothing new under the sun it's all been tried before uh, you, you read the book of Daniel King Nebuchadnezzar King Nebuchadnezzar he was um, the only person on earth uh, since we haven't had one ruler one head who whose word was law his word was law and he was the sole head of the whole government now, since he, after he fell, the kingdoms were divided. You had governments and you had the king. There was more than one king. But at that time, there was only one king that ruled the earth, and that was him. And what he said would be law. And that's what the, the last civilization is going to be. The last global government is going to be that one-headed world government and all, all the world's heads are going to give that power to that one person that person's called the antichrist and he will he will be associated to the church of rome it's all in the book of revelation because the book of revelation is not not believed it's dismissed but it's true if you know christ you know it's true if you don't know christ you won't believe it you won't see it and you need Jesus Christ and that and that's my invitation to any targeted individual is to seek that to seek that forgiveness and mercy and understanding and, and the spirit he will pro faithfully promise and gives a believer that calls upon him. And the salvation, your salvation and and your free gift of eternal life, which is something you will know, something you will never be able to lose once you've received it. And that gives you peace because you know that this this world's only temporary, it will pass away, it will fail and then Christ will put it all right in the end when he returns because he's God, he's all powerful and he's going to put all things right, the earth government, systems, people and all things will be dealt with because he will be the king he'll be the only king he might have other people appointed to serve him but he will be the sole head and he will be fair and just. There will be no evil, no wickedness in his kingdom. 
and 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 that's what he's already achieved on on his cross by his victory because he was holy and he never sinned and that's what he revealed that he's sinless and pure and holy and from God and he will come back and he's coming back and if you're unsaved you'll go through the tribulation period if you're saved he's going to deliver his his bride the church the believers from going through that period and that's so important today to know and to receive because if you go through that period your chances of survival are very slim because you're going to be picked off by this one world system and all the people that are, are pushing for that have already got the best seats and they're going to be doing things which you put your imagination to you're not they're not going to be people's friends they're betraying people getting people rid of people they don't want who've who've accepted that system but they'll still be killed off they're not they're not friends you can trust it's not a kingdom that is going to care about people it's going to be out for itself and it will destroy itself and then it then it implode on itself it's all written um so um any advice i can really another film i was thinking to mention if just to as an analogy of the truth you need to examine truth you need to discover what's research has been done throughout history and revealed about all these Jesuits and Masons and the system it's all out there and that all ties into targeting and another film is uh, Interview with a Vampire now that that's another good analogy of the vampires that uh, their home base is actually in France now, I'm not saying that that has any significance but the, the main body of vampires is uh, housed in France and that that's quite a type of these these evil people that dominate they're like vampires and and that's kind of suggested in that film whether that's deliberate as it for an ego look at us you know we we know this secret or it was simply inspiration showing a truth revealing a truth within that ins creative inspiration so that's another film I wanted to mention because it shows as an analogy it shows how the the dominant forces you know band together and then they try and it's called like you know like the, that that phrase a small a small tail wags a big dog and that's basically the world we live in it's dominated by the you know the few who've always been established and they will do everything they can to keep it that way because they don't want to let go of it out of fear, out of greed, out of their vain egos and imaginings, their vanity. Uh, and they will deceive and lie to get to get over the line of what their plans are, what their plans have been for generations. And if you're not aware of that, you'll be deceived. You'll be you'll die in your ignorance. You'll be caught out by it. So it's important to have an understanding of not just the targeting area but the main perpetrators throughout history and that's what, what I wanted to point people to because that's important knowledge to know um, so yeah I wanted to I, I did cover it in the video uh, that like, like the Jews were gaslighted now the, Jew, the, the seed of Israel were basically scattered around the earth after Christ they rejected the gospel they rejected Jesus Christ and then Following that, those events, the, the Jews were kicked out of uh, their homeland in, in Jerusalem and Israel, and then they scattered. So it's called the Lost Tribes there. They're not lost to God. And, you know, you've got to be careful about the people who claim that they're the Jews today because the, the lineage was lost, the record of their their family lines was was lost. Now the people, I have a theory, the people that hold that knowledge and record, because all the, all the Jews in Christ's time were censored, 
the Roman census because I had to pay taxes. So the they would have had the Jews' faithful record, which was in it's contained in the Old Testament, and they had their own records. And the Jews, uh, the Romans would have had that. So the Roman Church now may have that in the Vatican vault. So it's the Va it's the Vatican that know perhaps know who the true seed are, and they know who to target and persecute. And those people don't know that because of generations and generations, they lose their their inheritance has been chopped up, and they just don't may not be aware that they're the seed of Israel. But the Catholic Church could be full aware. And that's why it targets bloodlines and camps up around their family lines. So that could be one of the reasons you're a target. I'm not saying that that's the case of everybody, but I've just considered that, that, you know, that could be one of the reasons why the minorities are persecuted and always targeted, because they, the evil people know who they are and where to find them and where they're going to pop up. And, who, and then they try and steer them and then breed them and, and do all sorts of wicked mas machinations because Satan hates the Jewish race because it, it's a testimony of, of God. It's a testimony of Ibra a Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It's a testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why Satan wants to destroy Israel. That's, why, that's who's behind the Arab nations wanting Israel, Jerusalem off the map. Because these poor civilians in, in Israel that went over in their boats, they're not the corrupt Zion, you know, the political Zionists. The political Zionists don't, you know, they're, they're like a net around it, trying to influence it. And that all comes from the Catholic Church. So that's an important thing to know, the bogey, who, who the beast is. And Islam is just a bogeyman. If you look at the CIA, they... You know, that Osama bin Laden, you know, that ISIS, all these um, groups are just seeds planted and, and then they throw money at it and then they raise them up and then use them for political ends as the bogeyman. And, uh, you know, they've been playing that game for years. You know, that was the, cru the game of the Crusades, the bogeyman. And then you get... Then you rate, oh, how do we get rid of the Christians? Well, let's lead them into a holy war. Well, Christ, uh, you know, a Bible-believing Christian doesn't live with the, by the sword. You know, a, a Christian is to just be loving. It doesn't mean he can't defend himself and, and uh, you know, and fight. It just means that he, he's peaceful and truthful and he won't, he won't go out on the attack in a holy war. There's no such thing as a holy war. It's a spiritual war of the truth and standing for the truth. That's the holy war. So the, the people behind fermenting these things, the evil powers, the voice, and that all goes back to the to Vatican. Um, so I wanted to uh, just recommend, yeah, the, the, to really study out the Jesuit history um, now there's so much done on it, and uh, you know, and you're not going to get the whole truth of everybody. But it's important to study these things through to evaluate what is the truth, what is fact. Because there's a lot of misinformation planted, like in the Bible about the Bible and Constantine, and you know, it's all there's so many everywhere. There's a truth. There's a you know, some spiky brambles are being planted, deliberately planted around it to, you know, give the wicked people the upper hand. Um, so Jesuit history and Freemasonry, Albert Pike, the Jesuits. Now they're now the author of the Illuminati. What's his name? Adam Winesap. Winesap. He was a Jesuit. And so the authors that behind all this is is the Catholic body. Now it might, you know, the inspiration comes from Roman Catholicism, paganism. It might be, it might, it's not united in one mind and one heart. It's just, it's just corrupt and it's wicked and it inspires these wicked people, and they're behind. 
Freemasonry and the Illuminati, it all, the, the authors of it are the Jesuit arm of the, 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 the priesthood, the Society of Jesus, and they wear a false faith that they're political assassins, they're powerful people, you know, they, they, they camp around political leaders to be their influence. They compromise them or help them and use all their tricks and dirty games to like knit and steer and manoeuvre and position and corrupt and control and influence world leaders, world kings, world heads and all political designs. You can bet they've got a hand in it. And if you notice that all, all world leaders go and worship the Pope as if he's some holy man, the Holy Father. They call him Holy Father. He's not holy. He's a sinful man. He's a wicked man. He's wicked above wicked, wicked can be. He's a blasphemer. He claims to be the head of the church. Only Christ is the head of the church. And the scriptures confirm that time and time again through the Gospels. Because people don't believe, they're ignorant of the scripture. And they get deceived and this is a body of deception and it just wants to yoke the whole world in that deception that lie and lead it astray so that's an important thing to understand to understand targeting the context of targeting now it, it might be practiced by the government you know there's so many bodies involved i can't really say what the case is for every individual because I simply don't know. I haven't, you know, I haven't got that omnis omnipotence or omnipresence. I can't see all things, you know. And God's not going to show me all things because I, you, know, you have to learn, you know. You you have to learn step by step. But I do have an understand, some understanding of, of being targeted and, and what it's like, and you know how awful it is and how dreadful it is, and how widespread it is, because I studied it out. So I'd like to just um, add a few things that um, I think give uh, genuine truth. And when you get to uh, two or three witnesses and they all agree, you know, that's a lawful witness. That's how all truth is established. That's how crime scenes are solved. That's how um, research is done by establishing lawful witnesses. So I'd like to just mention, I mentioned Barry Trower now, he, he was an expert in, in radio, you know, in physics, in the physics of microwaves, and if you research him, he, he's got a vast understanding of these things and the technology and the uses of that technology. And another guy I found was a Canadian named Jerry Flynn. F L Y L N, and he was trained by the Canadian Army to be a radio uh, warfare expert. So they trained him in all aspects of radio frequencies, anything that used the radio frequency, radios, communications, weapons, radar. He trained in everything, so he's got that broad knowledge. And he he done a there's a, a video on YouTube. He, he went round after his retirement warning the Canadian people about smart meters because they were rolled out long before other countries like Europe. So that's another uh, area to investigate if you're new to this and, and you're looking for understanding. Uh, Barry Trower and Jerry Flynn uh, and, that, and that, that knowledge will help you build having those two witnesses and establishing for yourself that yes this is true and you believe that's true and the truth holds up and it's solid you can't move it off the table you can't dismiss it you can't deny it unless you don't want to know and you you want to remain ignorant well that's your choice but if you are looking for truth uh, you, you will find the truth there I'm not saying completely trust everything these men say just like everything, you need to test it and evaluate for yourself well, what, what is the truth within this. And then once that's on the table, you can build upon that truth. So that's another thing I wanted to add in the, in the video. Um, so Freemasonry. Uh, 
pra uh, practical solutions really is very difficult if you're targeted. Um, from my experience, having faith in Christ has r removed me a bit further away from it. Although I've passed through it like everyone else, it's enabled me to, even when it's surrounded me, it's held me up up in good stead. I still had the turmoil and the inner turmoil and the, the lashing out, you know, just like any other human being was. The, you can't you can't dismiss your feelings and the injust being under the yoke and justice of it. And um, you really, that without Christ, I don't really admire anyone who can go through it without a testimony because I couldn't. But I've you know I've suffered many things throughout my life and on with the targeting on top I wouldn't no way would I've been able to survive it would, I'd have fret, you know I'd, it's just unbearable and it doesn't go away there's no end to it and you either sink in it or you step up to the plate and deal with it now I like I say I can't see that really being done without without somebody helping you either you know, so I don't want to knock support groups, but I just wanted to warn people that, you know, that's not an avenue for everybody because people get left out and you can't, you know, people can't do everything. They can't, there's more, it's bigger than everybody. So it's not, it can't be down to just a few to take the responsibility. The responsibility has to be taken by individuals and uh, really Jesus Christ is the only solution because even ultimately after you've gained all the knowledge you know knowledge is not complete you need the complete framework of that knowledge and the foundation of of the truth to understand well where do you go from after here because you just uh, and uh, and you end up going Aim, well, going aimlessly through the dark and you, you, you just end up getting lost. You don't get anywhere. You come to a, a dam and then the persecution doesn't go away. Then you get frustrated thinking, you know, because you, you, if you're aiming for justice, you're aiming to overturn it and for it to stop. You really need to understand the con context of where we are in the world and where we are in the world is, is getting ripe. Wickedness is getting right because it's getting more dominant. So you're not going to see this injustice. There might be few, a few cases of it, but they'll be forgotten about in the morning and, and the wickedness will continue behind the scenes. And it might draw back for a little while, but it's going to, it's going to, it's got its eye on the road up ahead and it ain't going to change its course. And so really, if you think you're going to get justice and change the world, you are kid you, you're kidding yourself. And I've been through it, you know, it's a natural desire in us to have justice because when we've been unjustly treat, treated, we, we, we have these laws to deal with that. But the law's broken down. It's failed. England's failed. England's been, England's been on its knees for a long, long, long time. Just like America, it's just that the, the general public bo body has been... In its own little world, and it's like in the illusion of it, thinking it's all going to get better, everything's all right, it just carries on going. You know, it's all okay, you know, the world goes on. Well, no, it's just get, the infection's just got fat, there's a big boil building up. So, if you are a targeted individual, you, you in a positive light, you're lucky because you're not in ignorance anymore, you're not. You're not lost, but you need to go on further and understand what life's about, and that's what that's that's what Christ has given us. Free, it's a free gift. Salvation's a free gift, and that's what I want really want want to encourage and put as the first priority. And all the targeting on top of that, yeah, I do support good people. I do support individual testimonies, but I'm also aware of how the world works and how that can be corrupted. And it's not, it's not the solution. It it, it it's like a, um, it's like just uh, something to relieve a symptom. 
but it's not going to cure the actual problem. So um, that's that, that's an important thing to add. And uh, I think really I'm there. And I wanted to just mention to any believer, any Christian believer that's a targeted individual. There's a, there's a few people I've come across who saying that you only get targeted because you're, you know, you're at it's your fiery trial you're going through or you're a, you know you might there might be some sin in your life now that may be the case now but that ain't going to stop the targeting if you're being targeted you know it's like that saying it, it the sun shines on the righteous and the wicked you know good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people and vice versa so if you're a Christian and you're being heavily targeted, that doesn't necessarily mean it's because you're you're not saved or you're out of fellowship with the Lord. But if you are out, if you are in sin, if you have fallen in sin or fallen back to a sinful habit or whatever your sin is, that will keep you away from Christ and it's sustaining grace and it will make your trial far worse. But it, it won't take your trial away. Um, I'm going to read a scripture. You know, that's not quite a true teaching. So if you come across that, it, it's a false, it's an error. It's, it's a false teaching. Because um, all Christians are persecuted. It doesn't let up. And, and you want to ask yourself, well, if you're not being persecuted, if you're not having trials, if you're not, if you're not, if Satan isn't all over you, oppressing you, and even when you're close to the Lord and you're in fellowship and you're you're, you're doing all the right things you can possibly do, it doesn't make trials go away. It doesn't stop persecution. It doesn't stop the devil. The devil's like a roaring lion. He's on the sidelines. Every he don't take his eye off the ball, sifting you over. It's we that take our eye off the ball. It's we that fall short on a daily basis. It's we that need to be built up in that discipline. And, and, I, and that's how I've learned through not doing what I should be doing and suffering more than I, than the Lord wants me to suffer. So i um, just going to read one scripture which, I, which brought me a load of comfort. And then, then I think I'll wrap it up on the... The targeting but I just do want to try anyone that is a target I, you know no I'm a living I'm not holding myself up I've got nothing to boast about but I I, I just want to hold hold up my testimony and say I've, I've been through more than most people now I'm not comparing myself to say I'm better than anyone or I'm worse than anyone I just simply being honest I you know I've suffered my mum was targeted uh, you know, and I was targeted in the womb, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of people are targeted and I've been persecuted throughout my life, even before I was a Christian, but I didn't understand what was around me. It's like someone had me marked, and mapped, and I've learned over years and years to put the pieces together. I haven't got a full picture. But I, I do understand what it's like to go through these things on many levels. I'm, I've had many experiences with the weapons, the voice to skull. had that in my 20s. They destroyed relationships. And even people in my relationships were party to it. You know, it's not a... You know, this MK Ultra isn't delusional either. This has been going on throughout history. And it was picked up big time by uh, after World War II when they... Operation Paperclip when they when they uh, hired all the Nazi war criminals which should have been really prosecuted and kept in exile but no they they learned all the knowledge and of course you get like everyone wants to know it because they fear that it's going to be used on them so it, it it just got out of hand and now it's a dominant world practice and MK Ultra it just the science and practice and all the knowledge learned from it just continues and it carries on growing and and targeting is all part of that it's all it's all in the same lump um, <clears throat> right first I want to read first Thessalonians just a, a 
quick scripture for uh, any believer. Uh, let's see. Right, first, uh, is it first Thessalonians or second? Uh, let me just check. All right, second Thessalonians, uh, chapter one. Let's see. Where shall I start? Uh, start first. I'll read the whole. Uh, start at verse 4 so 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 that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure so you know we, when we suffer as Christians we're, we're only suffering the trials of what Christ suffered for all of all people and we all we all have a portion in suffering so when we are suffering we're we're suffering Christ's suffering, so we should really, it's not, it's not an easy, it's easy to say it, but we should be thankful to God for all these experiences, no matter how hard they are. Now I know that sounds, that will sound madness to some people, because they get wrapped in the injustice, it's not fair. Well, life isn't fair, you know, it's that, that, there's that saying, it's a hard knock life, it's an unjust world. And even good people get trodden on by an unjust world. And to be under that, it's not nice. I know it. And I know what it is like to want revenge or you want justice. But Christ has suffered all these things for the believer. So it shouldn't be a surprise to a Christian believer that you get persecutions and tries, trials. Um, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Because the whole world's under condemnation. So it's a, man, um, it's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Now people say that we, we need to go through suffering, suffering to purify us. Well, that's not quite true because we've all received the victory and, and righteousness of Jesus Christ. So we're all, the moment we believe... We, we retrieved the victory, we, we're purged by his Holy Spirit. Now we go through tri uh, trials, it's a sanctification to realise what it is we've received. But no matter where you die in your walk, you don't need that. You don't need to go through some fiery child to make you perfect. It doesn't quite go with the scriptures. Um, which some people teach, like some some of the church body teach that the church has to go through the tribulation to prepare it to meet Christ. Well, it takes faith and discipline and daily, and you receive that victory daily rather than at the end, because what you receive at the end is exactly the same as what you received at the beginning, because it's solely the grace and merit of Jesus Christ. You can't. You don't have to go through these trials to, to Im, impute that into you. It's already been imputed within you by the graciousness and merit of the Lord. It's a free gift. So when the Father sees us, he sees his Son. He doesn't see our sin. Because when we die, we put off in corruption. And we'll be putting on... Uh, we put off our corruption. And, we're, and through Christ, we'll be putting on incorruption. We'll be perfect and holy. And that won't be anything we've done, it won't be the works we've done or going through trials. But trials are just something that is a consequence of sin and the righteous judgments of God that are unfolding. And what's unfolding has already been dealt with on the cross. And, and what the Lord on the cross is the end. He's eternal, so he's outside of time. So what we are going through is the consequences of sin in time, the, the growing of wickedness, the growing of evil. So it's, it's no surprise that we will pass through sufferings and trials. Seeing it is a righteous thing which God, to recompense tribulation 
Oh, let me read again verse 5. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that we may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. So it's just a, a, a testimony. If you're suffering, it's a testimony of, of God's judgment and righteousness that we, we're partakers in his sufferings, is it? It, you can turn it around to be a positive thing. And of course, I'm not saying you, you relish in, sadistically relish in, in suffering and trial. Nobody likes it, but it is, it's part of life. Suffering is part of life. I'm not saying that suffering is just. It's just a token of, of you know, when you go through suffering, it can be a comfort maybe not at the time but when you apply yourself you can re and, and you read the scriptures you can re you know you get that comfort from the lord that he suffered all things and we are partakers of that suffering with him um, seeing it is a righteous thing which god with god to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired to all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that God, our, that our God would count you worthy of, his call, of this calling, and fulfil all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of, of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the so really sufferings are for our good. It's for you know, it's humbling and it, it, it teaches you and prepares you for what you've already received, which is you know the glory of jesus christ so um believers do suffer and good people suffer targeted victims need that hope and that if the gospel's not offered it's all well and good having all these testimonies come together which are helpful they're good you know and i you know i'd like to thank all those people that have had the courage so I know how difficult it is to put your heart and soul on on the camera and have the whole world look at it because if you're if you're hurt a wounded person you're self conscious that can be one of the most frightening things to do so I just want to thank all those people because that all those people that have had their courage to put their testimonies and you know their whole hearts on on a video and post it that I could, you know, me and other people could come along and find and gain some comfort or understanding from that or a, a little bit here and a little bit there. You know, they, they're very uh, praiseworthy things to do and if it wasn't for them, I would have never uh, really got round to doing it. So I want to thank that uh, TITV and the people who started that because that, watching that was really gave me a leg up to do this this testimony in part uh, to help other targeted individuals simply by other things I've learned and from their inspiration because I had a head injury and I suffered with uh, frontal labour impairments so I, I really struggle and although I've got the experience I find it very difficult to articulate and hold it all in one you know, I suffer from disassociation. So those people are probably not aware, but they, you know, they've helped me tremendously. And my faith in Christ has enabled me to, to pick those pieces up and put it into context. I want to thank those people. And, uh, you know, I really, you know, I wish that that platform remains as they've started off, because I saw it and I was very inspired by it. And I think if they continue like that and remain independent and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know what direction it's going to go in or what direction they want to take it in, but I hope that they keep it simple and as true as they started off. And I think if they do that, it'll help many, many people. 
because there's been a dearth, there's a dearth in targeted individuals in the UK. So I think those people recognise the need that I've also recognised, but I just didn't have the ability to get it up and going to do things like that. So you know, I want to wish them well in their in their lives and and with that program, with that um, that project and that outreach, I really hope that that continues and that grows and that gathers support. But like you know, and I hope that they keep a check on you know on the on its direction and 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 not because I learned from um, the MK Ultra stuff. Uh, other hands and investors got in and it corrupts the whole scene and that end up end up there's more victims it's like i worked in the mental health um i was a carer and advocate for independent uh, to help people in their independence i advocated for people with mental health uh, between doctors and between psychiatrists in their care and i, I saw in that system how you know, all you get a narrow band of people that, that are helped and they hold that up and we're the greatest and we're helping all these people. But what it doesn't show is you to fall out either side. So, you know, I've seen, I've experienced people losing their lives because they've got let down or they got, you know, they're misunderstood. And that's really one of my touchy feel you know that's where i'm quite sensitive on is recognizing the dangers in, in groups of bodies growing grow outgrowing themselves and they don't know where to take it forward because you know once everyone's aware then with well, them where there you go and i don't want to knock the good in it but i just want to i am aware that without christ it's it's vain really and that's the simple truth I can't deny that so part of my TI testimony has to be founded on my testimony of the Saviour and uh, repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that's really what I wanted to offer but I do sincerely generally thank those people I, um, I can't remember his name Shane and uh, the, the cameraman and you know there was, was a lady and another 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 guy you know and they gave their testimony so I really do appreciate those that body of people that, that you know that really encouraged me to to do this video and uh, and of course ultimately I'd like to you know thank everyone who's put their testimony online which which I've gained something from in the MK Ultra e even amongst all the confusion you know. I've, I can see the good in in giving testimonies. I you know I really appreciate people's real life experiences because it's real and it helps other people. Because having someone you can relate to can really be a comfort, can really be really be helpful. So I really do wish them well and hope people will look look them up. And if you're a targeted in individual and you come across you come across this and you're looking for a platform I would look at that platform I don't I don't know how it would be in the future I'm not saying completely trust it but I would say listen to these people they they seem to have sober experienced very level-headed people and that's what impressed me uh, I've not seen much like that so you know if I if I was them I would cover that and and uh, guard it well and uh, so thanks to those people and I think I really covered everything I wanted to go over yeah I think that's it so God bless you and anyone who is a targeted individual and has come across my video thank you for watching and I, I just uh, sincerely wish wish people all the best and uh, Leave it there now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.